Hi everyone, we're going to talk about exponential notation in this video. Like all things in math, if we can make things simpler, we always try to. So like if we have a problem 4 plus 4 5 times, we make that simpler by calling it 5 times 4 using multiplication. We'll say we've got 4 times itself 5 times. That's again pretty complicated looking, so we make it a lot simpler by using exponential notation. And here's how we write it. We write it as 4 to the fifth power. And I'm sure you've seen these exponents before. I know we've seen them as like maybe 2 times 2 is 2 squared, or x times x is x squared. That little exponent just tells you how many things are being multiplied. So say it was 2 to the third, what would that mean? Well, that would be three twos being multiplied, which is 8, not 6. Okay, we don't multiply those like that and call it six. It's how many twos be multiplied, three of them. Two times two times two is eight. So we call the four times four times four times four times four expanded form, because it's all expanded out. So we call that expanded form. And the four to the fifth is our shortcut. It's called exponential form. And like I said, if we can always make things easier in math, we try to, because math is complicated enough as it is. So moving on to the bottom, we're going to go and actually practice some exponential form here. And it really is a lot of counting. This unit is just a ton of counting how many of each thing. So for number one here, how many threes are there being multiplied? Well, I see four threes, which is why it is three to the fourth. And then, you know, it, it works the same thing for everything else. Um, it gets a little bit trickier for fractions. Just a little bit. There's five one-halves being multiplied. So when you write it, you can't write it like this because that would mean just the one gets to the fifth power. So you got to put this one-half in parentheses like that. And then let's see, for negatives, same kind of thing. If you just put a negative 10 to the fourth, we got to be careful because you want this whole negative 10 being raised to the fourth. So again, we use parentheses. Basically, if you're not sure, you could always use parentheses. Like for number two, there's six twos, so it'd be two to the six. You could put it in parentheses or just call it two to the six. You don't need the parentheses there, but it doesn't hurt to have it on there. For number five, same idea, there's three y's here, so y to the third. And then for number six, there's three x's five times. So the three x can't be like this, because that would just be um, x five times. I want the whole thing five times, which is why you got to put it in parentheses again in order to show the whole thing gets that five exponent. Now, going the opposite way, 10 to the fifth would just be, of course, five tens being multiplied. X to the fifth would, of course, be five x's being multiplied. You'll see me use the, the dot for most multiplication here because the time sign looks like an x. For, let's do number two. So a negative three multiplied by itself three times. You could use parentheses there. Let's clean that up a little bit. If that makes it easier to understand, you could obviously keep those on there. This means three x's three times. So three x times three x times three x. Whereas number six, only the x has the cubed. So it's 1.5 only once and then x three times. Be careful on the difference here. Only that x is cubed versus this whole thing is cubed because that has parentheses. And then for number five, the whole thing has that four, so x, y times itself four times. And there's our basic intro there on exponential notation. How to write things in exponential form, how to write it in expanded form. We're going to now look at some vocabulary. So exponential form is when it's written in using an exponent. So there we go. Two to the fifth is exponential form. We've also got expanded form that we've already seen. That's where it's all written out as multiplication of all the numbers. And then standard form is a new name for things we've already seen. So the normal way we see numbers. For example, 27 is the standard form of three cubed, which is expanded form. So we need names for both forms. Standard form is just how we standardly see the number. And then we're going to see more on this scientific notation thing later. Don't worry too much about that for now, um, but we're going to see more on that later. 
So in these next few pages here, you're gonna figure out the rules for laws of exponents. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna write things out to figure out the shortcuts. That's how we do things in math. We do a little bit of extra work at first in order to find the short ways of doing it later. So for A number one, we're gonna first write each of these in expanded form, and then we're gonna just count and find the shortcut. So two to the third times two squared, what does that mean? Well, it's two times two times two times two times two. This is two squared. This is two to the third being multiplied in between. Then we just count how many twos are there. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five. So there are two to the fifth. So there's five twos here essentially being multiplied. And that, that's what we're looking for is how can we jump right to this without having to do this every single time. And I bet you can already see it, but just to make sure we understand it, let's do a couple more. So three to the fourth times three to the third. So three times three times three, that's three to the fourth. Three cubed is three threes being multiplied. So let me just count how many threes are there total. Well, I count seven, so three to the seventh. Again, we're looking for a shortcut here. How can we get to seven? How can we get to five? What's the relationship there? Again, I bet you already see it. Six times six times six times six times six for six to the fifth. And then five more sixes. How many are there total? Ten. Okay. By now, I bet you see the pattern if you didn't already. What we're doing here is we're taking the base, we're keeping it the same, okay? So the two is still a two as the base. The three doesn't change at all, it's still a three. And the six is still a six. The base doesn't change. So the base stays the same. What happens to the powers, the exponents? Different name for exponent is a power. Well, the powers look like they're actually adding. So we keep the base, add the exponents. And again, another name for exponent is a power. So powers. That's how we do this. We're multiplying two things in exponential form with the same base. So like for this rule down here, if it's a to the m times a to the n, it'd be the same base, a, to the m plus n. So you just add the exponents if you have the same base and they're multiplying in exponential form. Well, if we add them when we're multiplying, I wonder what happens when we're dividing. Let's see. So we're using multiplication here backwards to figure out division. So it says one's already done for us, three cubed times three squares, three to the fifth. So working backwards with fact families here, three to the fifth divided by one of these would be the other one. So let's do it for the second one, b. So let's take the product, 4 to the 11th, divide it by either one of these, and get the other one. Just because we know going, to, going backwards with division, it has to be true. If this times this is that, then going backwards, 4 to the 11th divided by either one of these has to be the other one. That's kind of our fact families with multiplication and division. So for the next one, very similar, 5 to the 12th divided by either one, we can just pick one, is the other. And then for the last one, x to the fifth divided by either one is the other one. So what's the shortcut here? When we're dividing with the same base, what happens to the exponent in the base here? That's what we're looking for. So the bases don't change. We've always got the same base. 4, 4, 4, 5, 5, 5, 8, x, 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 3, 3, 3. The bases don't change. But the exponents do change, and those are being subtracted. So we keep the base. But this time we subtract the exponents. Which should make sense, because it's the opposite of what it was for multiplying. So dividing, multiplying, we added the exponents and kept the base. For dividing, it's the opposite. Keep the base, subtract the exponents. So why is this? Why are we subtracting? Well, let's look at this example here, the last one. x to the fifth is x times itself five times. x cubed is x times itself three times. So how do we get down to x squared? Well, what essentially happens here is multiplying and dividing by the same thing cancel out. Like they undo each other. They're inverse operations. So one and one with the x's, one and one with those x's, and one and one with those x's leaves us with two x's left. Up top, x squared. And that's why we subtract them, because essentially the bottom ones cancel out some of the top ones.
So for our rule here, this would be A, keep the base, to the M minus N.